So in today's video, I want to go over two of the best display technologies when it comes to wearables. And I'll also give you guys the pros and cons to each of those technologies. The Galaxy Watch 4 Classic that I have here has an AMOLED display, which has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz. That means when you're looking at the time or scrolling through the menus, that display is refreshing each individual pixel at 60 Hertz or 60 times per second. When the Galaxy Watch 4 goes into its always on state, when you're not looking at the display, when you're just walking around, that display is refreshing at one time per second or one hertz. So even when you're not looking at the display, it's still doing some sort of refreshing in the background to keep up with the time and everything else. Meanwhile, the Garmin Phoenix 7 that I have here has a transflective memory in pixel display. What the heck does that mean? So here's a quick rundown. Transflective displays reflect ambient light, so the brighter the light is around you, the brighter the display gets. Memory and pixel displays only refresh the pixels that need to be refreshed. So if you're looking at something and there's nothing that needs to be refreshed, well, then the refresh rate is literally zero. If we take a look at this watch face, as you see, the only thing that's changing on the display is my heart rate. That means only those pixels are being refreshed. The, the rest of the watch is completely static. Nothing is refreshing. Memory and pixel displays are also always on. They don't have an always on mode. They just are always on. All the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every second. There's no way to turn it off unless you turn off the watch. By the way, if you guys are enjoying today's video, definitely click that like button because it helps the video out and my channel out immensely and I truly appreciate it. Since transflective MIP displays reflect ambient light, the outdoor visibility is simply unmatched. AMOLED just cannot compare in terms of brightness, even with the 1000 nits that the Galaxy has. But hold on, don't sell your Galaxy watch just yet. AMOLED also has a major advantage, but also another major disadvantage. Keep watching. The advantage is, well, it just looks better. The Galaxy Watch 4 can show tens of thousands of different color variations, whereas MIP displays show much less color variations. For example, the Phoenix 7 can only show 65. By the way, Garmin does sell an AMOLED watch, and this watch, the Epix, can show 65,000 colors. So the Phoenix, with its MIP display showing 65 colors, well, you can see how this is a major win for AMOLED. Another disadvantage to AMOLED is simply something that we know and all hate. The battery life. It's the reason why you charge your Galaxy Watch or Apple Watch every single night or maybe once every two days. Since MIP displays don't refresh the screen until they absolutely need to, and even when they need to, they only refresh the pixels that absolutely need to be refreshed, well, as you can tell, that saves a lot of battery. How much battery? Great question. This 42 millimeter Phoenix 7S can last 11 days on a single charge, and that's without turning any feature off. But it doesn't stop there. Since MIP displays use so little power, they actually benefit a lot from solar charging. The Phoenix 7S I have can increase its battery from 11 days to 14 days using the built-in solar panels that are inside of the bezel. In fact, Garmin sells the Instinct, which is what I'm wearing right now. Uh, if you buy this in the Solar Edition, you can have unlimited battery life. Now that's insane. Since AMOLED displays take up more power, they can't really benefit from solar charging because the amount of energy that they will gain from the sun is not really substantial enough to make a difference to increase your battery life. Everything sounds all fine and dandy for MIP displays, but what are some of the disadvantages to MIP displays? Well, the lack of colors is one downside, but another downside is the indoor visibility. It's nowhere as good as AMOLED since transflective displays need a light source to function best. Garmin has thought of this by incorporating a backlight. You can activate the backlight by tapping the display, using the gestures, or just by clicking any of the buttons on the watch. But what about the Garmin Epix? Somehow Garmin figured out how to make it last 6 days in its always on mode and 16 days in gesture mode. Now I'll be honest, I have no idea how Garmin does this. I don't know if it's something to do with their algorithm, but it's pretty wild that Garmin figured out how to make an AMOLED display on a watch last 6 days in its always on mode. And then if you turn off the display and use it in gesture mode, that goes up to 16 days. 
that is wild. If I turn off my Apple Watch, well, if I turn off the always-on display on my Apple Watch or my Galaxy Watch, they last maybe three to four days, nowhere close to 16 days. So it all just comes down to one thing, the battery life. Since Garmin excels in outdoor activities, outdoor sports, outdoor lifestyle, they want their watches to have the most amount of batteries so you get to stay active more for longer and focus less on needing to charge the watch. And of course, the amazing transflective display out in the sun. I mean, it's just wow. So here's the question of the day I have for you guys watching. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the watch that has amazing outdoor visibility, that has a backlight for good indoor visibility, and battery that can potentially last unlimited? Or do you guys want the more modern AMOLED display which has amazing indoor visibility with pretty darn good outdoor visibility, but the battery life will be affected by, well, a lot? So let me know down below because I myself am pretty curious what the majority of people want. So let me know. If you guys did enjoy this video, again, click that like button. It's completely free to you and it helps me out a lot. And if you are new here and you like these types of videos, definitely subscribe for more future content. And that's it. This was Mark from Markstech. Adios.